So on this project, the scope of work has pretty much stayed the same throughout. It's just taken me a while to get through it all. Uh, but recently we decided that we want to go ahead and install a window on this exterior wall. And I was really hesitant to do that at first because of the fact that it's in the tub surround. But I decided that it's probably a good idea so that we have some natural light in here and it doesn't feel so much like a cave. So the first thing I did was I went outside and took a look at the wall outside to see if there are any instructions to putting in a window. So this is the, the wall on this side. And it's got this crusty old aluminum window that we're going to replace at some point. And we got to paint the side of the house, but that's beside the point. So the kitchen window's here. And then the bathroom window is going to go kind of about in this area here. That's the bath fan right there. That's the vent for it. And one thing I wanted to make sure that I did was have the top of both windows be in the same plane. It's not really necessary, I don't think, because the windows are two different sizes. But if I can achieve that, that'd be probably a good idea. Okay, so the next thing to do was to determine the proper framing for the new window. And I've never installed a window before, so I had to do a little bit of research on this. As I did more research, I realized that there are actually about five different factors that come into play when you're determining the proper header size. So I've got those listed here. I'm not going to pretend to understand all the factors, but uh, this seemed to be fairly consistent with what I found online as I was doing my research. So the first thing is what's called the ground snow load. And to find the ground snow load, I went on a website called designcriteriabyzip.com. And it's a membership website, so I had to sign up for a 14-day trial. And so what I did was I signed up for the trial, got my ground snow load, and then I immediately canceled the membership. The second thing is the roof snow load. And I found the roof snow load by going on my city's website. And it referenced IRC 301.2. The third thing is the header span. And so what that means is the size of the header above the window. And in my case, the header is going to be about three and a half inches wider than the actual window frame. The fourth thing is the building width. So to find the building width, you measure that perpendicular to the roof ridge. So that's how that's found. So the last thing is the header support. And what I mean by that is what is the header going to be supporting above it? So in my case, I'm supporting the floor above the ceiling above, and then also the roof above. So once I had that information, I went on the IRC website and I pulled up this code mention here, this code section. It's R502.5. And there's a table here, R502.5, with one in the parentheses for exterior bearing walls. So all those things I just talked about, like the ground snow load, the building width, the header span, and then also the configuration that I have here, those are all mentioned in this table. And then there's some notes kind of interspersed throughout the code section here, as you see right there, that talk about other things like the roof snow load. So I've circled these couple items here, and I determined based on the fact that I'm actually going to be at my building width is 40 feet instead of 36, and then other doing some other reading in here. I determined that the two 2x8 two header is the size I'm going to need in my case. Okay, so once I determined the proper header size, the next thing to do was to put together a diagram. So here's my diagram here. And as you see right there, I've got a double top plate in this bathroom. Then I've got the two 2x8 two header there. And on either side of that header, I've got a king stud here and a king stud there in blue. Then to support the header, the IRC table mentions that I need to have two trimmer studs on this side and two trimmer studs on this side. But the inspector at City Hall mentioned that I only need to have one. So one there and one there. There's a sill plate. And then there's some cripple studs to support the sill. These two right here and right here represent the original framing in here, the original wall studs. So the plan is to space out the cripple studs the 16 inches on center from this original framing. 
So as I said, I went to the city and talked to the inspector, and he said it looked good. And I got a permit, of course. I had to pay more money to uh, get a permit. So I'm ready to go. Okay, so I've got my header pieces all cut here. I'm going to go ahead and put them together. And so how this is going to work, what I've done here is I've cut the quarter-inch plywood that's going to be sandwiched by the two 2x8s uh, two just a little bit short. So it's a little bit shorter height-wise and then also length-wise a tiny bit shorter. And that's so I can easily fit it in here without having to try to make sure it's properly aligned with the other 2 bys. Okay, so I've got all my clamps in place. I've got the two 2x8s two aligned and I've got the quarter inch plywood between the 2x8s so that looks pretty good. And what I've done here is I've put the clamps on so that I uh, they're not too close to the end here and not too close to the middle so I can put my nails in. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and put the fasteners in. What I'm using is these three and a half inch 16 penny nails. And from what I've read, the uh, code requirement is that you use these to build a header. That's a three and a half inch header. And so what I'm going to be doing is putting one nail in every 16 inches on center. So I'll start here and then work my way over. And I may add a, a couple extra just for additional strength. Because those nails are so uh, thick a gauge, I'm going to be drilling some starter holes so I don't split the wood. So I'm going to use this drill with a 1 8 inch drill bit. Okay, so I'm going to use the palm nailer to set these nails. Okay, so there's a finished 2x8 header. So what I'll do now is continue on with the rest of the framing in the bathroom. 